a comparing um, normal adult entertainment, like two-dimensional adult entertainment, to virtual reality adult entertainment. It's like so. The difference is so stark. Todd Glider is the CEO of Bedoink VR, a virtual reality entertainment platform for adult entertainment. Todd previously served as the CEO for the European traffic program Euro Revenue. He joins us now on Cloud Moves TV. Todd, welcome. Real pleasure to have you on. Oh, it's good to be here, Emma. Now, Todd, what virtual reality features does Bedoink have that really enhances adult entertainment? Well, virtual reality in and of itself profoundly enhances adult entertainment. Um, if you've not experienced it yet, you'll be blown away by what you see. I, comparing um, normal adult entertainment, like two-dimensional adult entertainment, to virtual reality adult entertainment, it's like so. The difference is so stark. It's so immediately unbelievable because it breaks the fourth wall. Like you're not watching um, a, a porn video like uh, on the other side of a, a, a screen, you're, and it's not like 3D where things are coming out at you. You're literally inside the screen, and everything is happening to you and for big fans of adult entertainment it's the closest that they're ever going to get to actually being in the same room with an adult starlet which of course is very exciting for a lot of people so it really it, it not only is it revolutionizing an adult entertainment in every every way about it because you have to shoot it differently the performers have to perform very very differently than they do normally but virtual reality porn is the only it's the only segment in virtual reality that even has a business model right now. I mean, we're actually making money doing this. Everybody else is just pr producing uh, demonstrations, and the gaming out there isn't all that good yet either. So, more than anything in the world, virtual reality porn is driving this whole uh, uh, virtual reality sector right now, like like nothing else out there. I mean, I joked is, and recently it's like a month ago in Rolling Stone magazine that that lucky uh, that that. Palmer Lucky ought to be paying us a referral fee for every sale of his Oculus Rift because we're the reason they're buying them. Todd, what do you think is going to be the next big thing in sex tech then? The next big thing in sex tech is you're getting you're getting more and more of the teledildonic industry, you know, where you've got these uh, sex toys for men and women that can be manipulated remotely. So, if you and your fella are like 3,000 miles apart because of business. Not only can you have a video chat uh, together, but you can both have these devices that you can control across the ocean to make your kind of intimate moment together, uh, telecommuni uh, the, the telecommunication moment together, more immersive, feeling more like they're almost there. So that's one of the big things that's going to happen. You're also going to really see um, all of these devices that you, you see right now for virtual reality. I mean, they're kind of cool, but it's like wearing a ski goggles in your living room, right? So you're, they're going to get smaller, they're going to get more comfortable, they're going to be much, much, much more affordable. So it's going to become much more a part of everybody's da daily life. Yeah. Todd, how have you seen the landscape of virtual and augmented reality develop over the past few years? I mean, sex tech seems to have really been at the forefront of this, like really pioneering and capitalizing on this technology. Right. Well, I mean, a lot of it is, to me, sex tech is really just a new word for adult entertainment, for pornography. Right. You cannot have adult entertainment without technology anymore. Like the, the, the few studios that tried to make a go of it without embracing technology, without taking on a big technological arm, they're dead. They're all gone. So I mean, like, you know, in, in the world of adult entertainment, you're 80% tech, maybe 10%, uh, maybe 10% porn. I don't know where I did with the other 10%. There's another 10% in there. Um, but I mean, so it's really, a, a sex tech is porn now. I mean, and, and I think one of the huge things is that, particularly when you talk about this new generation, I mean, I'm from Gen X, I'm old. But like the newer generation, people who are like between 18 and 30, 35, they all grew up with adult entertainment being pervasive. I grew up with it being scarce, and then all of a sudden it was falling out of the sky. But but they grew up with it just being normal. So the to me there is there is a whole generation here who sees adult entertainment as as nothing taboo, as 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 incendiary as soccer. I mean, they, it's just another form of entertainment. So I think that you see um, men and women equally, you know looking for whatever is new out there and I think that virtual reality as one example um, 
is really going to be uh, the porn for this generation of people. I think for virtual reality to survive, it's got to be it's the millennials' porn. Yeah. You know, so I think that's really going to make a big, big difference, and will be the the uh, deciding factor of whether it lives or dies. So, Doink, that's a 360-degree immersive experience. Obviously, it's got audio as well. So, do you think AR and VR are going to completely eclipse traditional video platforms? I think it will eventually happen, but I think I will be toothless by the time that happens. I think that's going to be like 20, 30, 40 years from now. That's going to be a long time from now. A lot has to happen for, for that to happen. I mean, AR is so, so new, and VR is so, so new. So to get to a point where you're consuming your content by default through virtual reality, through AR, um, there's a lot of steps that have to happen there. And there's a huge existential crisis for, for filmmakers, for people who make content. I mean, if you're a director, if you're making a content, well, you're saying to the audience, I want you to see the world through my eye. That's what you as a director do. You're, I'm looking at whether you're, whatever movie you're watching, you're saying, look here, look here, I have something to show you. Virtual reality, you're giving the consumer this ability to look anywhere they want, even if the consumer is supposed to look over here because she's winking and that signals something for the plot or the narrative. Well, he's not necessarily looking over there. He may be looking over there and the whole, the whole narrative structure is blown. So you've you got a real existential crisis for all of these uh, directors out there who now have to surrender this control to basically the consumer. So I, I'm, I, I'm rambling here, but, I, but, I, but what it basically means is that it's going to take a lot of, of cycles, let's say, for us to get to a point where AR and VR is the default uh, uh, mass communication medium. Todd, do you think anything is going to disrupt and replace the app, broadly speaking? Um, disrupt and replace the app. I mean, I think obviously the app is going to kill the web. I think that's what, the, you know, the app is killing the web. Do I think something can replace the app? I, I think it's hard to say that only because, I mean, app is so kind of a generic term. Yeah. You know, it's like there's, you know, we would have to, I think, get to a point where the way we deliver apps, I, I guess the the, phone, the the device need to change. You think of an app relative to a phone. Yeah. So I think maybe when the device changes to something else, maybe it's some virtual reality kind of a thing, then it changes. But I still think you'd call it an app. I mean, it's like, it's like, it, it's something that does something. It has an app practical application, or maybe an impractical application, but an application nonetheless. So I don't see the app being becoming like uh, uh, obsolete, no. Well, Todd, speaking of apps, just one very last question. What would you say to those people who haven't been able to attend Apps World today and are thinking of coming next year? What would you say to those people? I'd say book your, start booking your tickets now. I mean, it is a great event. It's a really, really cool space. I mean, it feels very, very high tech in here. Not just the space itself, but even when you leave outside of the, the convention hall, you know, the, the, the adjoining hotels, everything about it feels uh, like what's next. Todd, pleasure to have you on. Thank you so much for joining us. That's Todd Glider speaking to us here. I'm Emma Boyle, and this is Cloud Moves TV.